Moving around a VR world. The position and orientation of the 3GS virtual camera when the renderer .xr is presenting property is true is dictated by the WebXR session. The headset is set to the poles defined by the WebXR property reference space. More about that in section 5. For now, just accept that you cannot override this value. You cannot, for example, use camera.position.set to position the virtual camera at a new location. For a 3 degrees of freedom headset, the camera will have a fixed location of 0, 0, 1.60, set to an average adult eye line. Remember the Y value defines the up direction. Take a look at app.js in the folder start lecture 3 underscore 7. Lots of boxes are created in rows and columns. The aim of this video is to allow the user to move around the scene by pressing the trigger button. The movement will always be in the direction of the user's gaze. At the moment, pressing the trigger on the controller does nothing. If you look at the template, you'll see the handle controller method is essentially empty. So how do we move the camera if we cannot override its position? The answer is we add it to another object. Then the camera will have its own pose set by WebXR, but the renderer will combine this with the camera's parent to calculate the final location. Let's get started. In the init scene method, add this code. This dot dolly equals new three dot object three D. This dot dolly dot position dot Z equals five. This dot dolly dot add this dot camera. This dot scene dot add this dot dolly. This dot dummy cam equals new three dot object three D. This dot camera dot add this dot dummy cam. Notice that in addition to the camera's parent dolly, we also create another object 3D instance, dummy cam, and add this to the camera. We'll see why in a moment. Bear in mind that the app now has an object 3D instance called dolly, and that moving this will affect the camera's location in the scene. Notice if you run the app now, the camera is in a different place. Time to work on the handle controller method. Slide down to find it and add this code. Cons speed equals two. Cons quaternion equals this dot dolly dot quaternion dot clone. This dot dolly dot quaternion dot copy. This dot dummy cam get world quaternion. This dot dolly dot translate z. Minus dt times speed. This dot dolly dot position dot y equals zero. This dot dolly dot quaternion dot copy quaternion. If you run the app now and press the trigger, you'll move in the direction that you're looking, but your distance from the ground will not change. Try commenting out the line where the position y value of the dolly is set to zero to see the difference. Let's review the code. First, we store the quaternion property of the dolly. The quaternion is the property of an object 3D that defines its orientation. It's important in VR that the orientation always comes from the headset. We do not want to affect the orientation of the dolly as this will affect the headset's orientation. We store its value and then restore it at the end of the snippet of code. After storing the quaternion, we get the dummy cam's world quaternion. If instead you use the camera's world quaternion, it will give a false value. This is the reason we added an object 3D instance to the camera. Effectively, a little trick so we can access the orientation of the camera easily. Notice the handle controller method has two parameters, controller and DT. DT is the time in seconds that has elapsed since the last call. It's set in the render method using a 3GS clock instance. This has a get delta method which reports the time that has elapsed since get delta was last called. By calling it in the render method, we have the elapsed time since the last frame update. We use this in a speed variable to control the speed of movement through the scene. Now that the dolly is pointing in the direction matching the camera, we can move the dolly using the translate Z method. This will move the dolly along its local Z axis. Here you can see why we've had to add the line updating the position, because the local Z axis could be pointing up or down, 
and we do not want this in our movement. There is a problem though. We can walk through walls. There are many techniques for limiting the movement to only allowed areas of a scene and we see another approach later in the course using a navigation mesh. In this video we're going to use ray casting. We're going to cast a ray in the direction we're walking and see if this hits one of the boxes. If it does we'll check to see if the distance between the ray origin and the hit point is less than a distance limit we'll set and if it is we won't allow the movement. Add const wall limit equals 1.3 and let pause equal this dot dolly dot position dot clone pause dot y plus equals 1. The origin for our ray is 1 meter up not at ground level. Then, after setting the quaternion for the dolly to the camera's world quaternion, enter this dot dolly dot get world direction, this working vector, this working vector negate, this dot raycaster dot set, pause this dot working vector. Let blocked equal false, let intersect equal this dot raycaster intersect objects, this dot colliders. If intersect dot length is greater than zero, if intersect zero dot distance is less than wall limit, blocked equals true. And wrap the translate z action inside a condition. If not blocked, this dot dolly dot translate z minus dt times speed. Now if we run the app, movement stops if we get too close to the boxes. Get world direction will set the vector past to the orientation of the positive z axis. Since the camera points down the negative z axis, we need to reverse the direction of this vector using the vector3 method negate. At this stage we have the information we need to set our raycaster. It needs an origin, here we have the pos value we've created, and we need a direction. This is stored in our working vector instance. The boxes are all stored in the class property colliders, and we use the intersect objects method of the raycaster instance. Intersect objects returns an array of intersections ordered by distance, with the nearest first. Each element in the intersect array contains an object that includes these items. Distance, point, object, UV. There are other items, face, face index, UV2 and instance ID, but the ones on the screen are usually the most useful. In the code we've just entered we simply use the distance property. If this is less than the wall limit, then we set the block flag to true. Now you have one possible way to move the camera around in VR. Interacting with objects in the virtual world is great fun. This video is from my Udemy course, Learn to Create WebXR VR and AR Experiences with 3GS. Get the full course at a great discount by following the link at nicklever.com forward slash courses.